Hi, and welcome to another episode of Natural Bliss Podcast for a better quality of life. So you're going to want to head on over. I cha- We changed our primary website, heaven- it's heavenlybodieswellness.com. So instead of going to Majestic Clip Tara to get there, you can go straight there. And we are having a Valentine's Day sale. So from now until... February 10th, 2022, you can get 20% off site-wide. You just use promo code share love, all capitals. Remember that. Okay. So let's see who do we have with us today. Today we have Denise Recullen. She is a mother and generational kahuna wisdom keeper. She comes from a lineage of kahunas in Hawaii, which are known as shamans priests, priestesses, healers, who have access to ancient wisdom. She lives on the big island of Hawaii with her family and cat. She trained at the Clairvoyant Center of Hawaii. She uses clairvoyance and other healing modalities to transform her ancestral karmic baggage. Today, she helps other women transform their ancestral karmic baggage from their families using her ancestral cleanup method. When she isn't spending time with family or doing energy work, she enjoys nature, exploring other healing modalities, and traveling. Janice, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Hi, Joyce. Hi. (laughs) Good to have you here, all the way from beautiful Hawaii. Yeah. How nice for you. You're talking about traveling. Who needs to travel when you live in Hawaii? Yeah, you get, sometimes you get island fever, you know? (laughs) I've never heard of it, but yeah. I guess that's the thing. Yeah, there is many beautiful places in the world than here. <laughs> so I I was reading, I was on your website today and I was reading the a page the page about you. So tell me a little bit something about some of the things because you said you were experiencing some things when you were a child that you didn't understand. Can you share with us some, some, what those things were? Yeah, so it was like I because I was I was very sensitive. I could feel energy around me and I could feel like I'm an empath. But not only that, but I I also could see things. Like, so my grandmother, for an instance, when I was little, she would come to visit me before I would go to bed. And I would have these long conversations with her. And then in the morning, I would would wake up and I would tell my mother, hey, I had this conversation with you know, this lady at the time, her name, it was just a lady. And my mother was like, uh, kind of (laughs) confused. She was like, "Mm, something's not right here. We don't talk about that. Uh, we, we, we don't discuss things like that. So she was very shut off. So I was like, she actually, did did she actually say that to you? Yeah. Wow. Blankly. And that made me feel like, okay, it's not safe for me to trust or ask for help for my family, right? It wasn't safe. So as I got older, these things will happen. Like there's just so many things. Like when I got pregnant at the age of 17, um, that was one of my next spiritual awakening of, I would, I, of course I was pregnant already, but I seen and I knew that he was gonna be born with some kind of defect. I didn't know exactly what. He was born and he had a heart defect. He had a heart murmur that we soon at the age of three we went through surgery and that's a whole different other subject there but yeah but when we initially decided to go surgery it was such a rush thing and the doctors like nope we need to go do this now and all this stuff and trying to rush us and I was like no we're not doing this right now it's going to be a time but not right now like I literally fought the the doctors I was fighting my family because that's not what I saw. And then I had the vision of like, when we were going to do it, I saw the, like the nurses and all that kind of stuff. And then so that day that I said, fine, whatever, do it. At that moment, like I neglected my intuition, even though I knew what it was, I neglected my intuition. I said, whatever, go ahead, we'll do it. We'll do whatever you want. We went to surgery that and surgery and my son had an asthma attack on the table. So mm-hmm. they couldn't, they couldn't do surgery on him. So I said, I told you it's not time yet. So we went back home three days. It took us three months and then he had surgery and it was perfectly fine. Exactly what I saw. So there's like things like that, like numerous experiences, you know, growing up, I would have like going around certain places 
it, I would be uncomfortable going to certain places and doing certain things, you know? So, yeah, <laughs> I hope that answered it. <laughs> so then you, you had mentioned that when you, what, when was it that you started exploring what you were experiencing? Yeah, so growing up, I was not, my family wasn't open to spirituality or anything either, even though my grandfather was a healer. As I said, I'm a kahuna wisdom paper, so it came from my lineage. It came from my family, from my mother to my grandfather and from my great-grandmother. And so, but down the lineage, it got blocked. And there was a lot of fear around it. So we wouldn't talk about, we, it wasn't talked about in my family. So ha having this sense, but not having that outlet for me to express that and to explore that. So I have to go seek out outward. As I said, like my, my real first um, spiritual awakening uh, was when I got pregnant at 17. All I knew is that even though I was young having him, I just knew I needed to have him. I just knew down in my heart that I needed to have him no matter what. And, but then on the other hand, I also knew that if I do have him, I did not want to be like my mother. So whatever that looked like, I just didn't want to be like her. My mom was very, um, you know, controlling and overbearing. So I just didn't mm -hmm. want to be completely separate. And so years went by. And then one day I was leaving work. And this was in 2003. I was leaving work. And I in, in at work, there was a big ballroom. And they were um, having a like a healing fair, like a health fair. So there's a whole ballroom. I had this lady waving her hands in the air like this. And I was like, wow, she is weird. And I was like, ah, no. So part of me, my, my, my mind was like, ah, that's weird. No, I don't want that. But that was my family's fear, right, coming in. But then inside of me, internally, I was drawn to her and I was sitting right in front of her. <laughs> and I was like what is this she goes oh, it's an aura healing and I was like what is it she goes you want one I was like I don't know what this is this is kind of weird scary I don't know if I should but I still got one she didn't say anything it was like 10 minutes but it felt like forever she didn't say anything and when she was done I asked her what did you do to me what what happened and she goes well sometimes uh where our energies are sponges and we absorb you know energies around us in our energetic field so I just helped you clear in your energetic field and so when that happened um I just knew that I felt lighter I felt clear I felt you know better and after that I just I was hooked hello Hello. Joyce? Oh. Hi, Joyce. Hey. I had paused it. You froze. I don't know why. And so when I saw this lady waving her hands in there and I did like, my mind just went like, she's weird, Don't stay away from her. And I, at that time, it was, of course, my family's trying to protect me, trying to keep me away, right? That was my family's fear. But inside of my hearts of hearts and my deep down, I just found myself sitting right in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, would you like an Oregon? And I was like, what is that? And so she's like, oh, let me just give you one. So she did her thing. It was like not even 10 minutes, but it felt like forever. And I just was like, okay. She didn't say a word to me. So I was like, all right. And then when she was done, I asked her, what did you do to me? And she was like, well, we sometimes, we pick up in our energetic field we're sponges, so we pick up energy around. And what I did is I helped you clear that out of your energetic field. And I was like, oh, and then, cause all I know till this day, this has been in 2003 years ago. All I know is a remembering of feeling lighter, feeling, mm -hmm. feeling clear, 
feeling a sense of internal peace and freedom. And I was like, I want that. Whatever you just did to me, that's what I, I just didn't want it at this moment. I want to feel this every single day, all the time. I want it on all the time. And so then I found myself doing, doing the work and I kept doing it. So it's been, what? well, from there, it took me seven years and then I got into it. So it's been like 12 years now. So I've been doing it since. So it's helped me so much. So reason why I do this ancestral cleaning, because I want to share this with other people. So the ancestral uh, clearing, is that part of the uh, Kahana? Am I saying that right? Kahuna? Kahuna. Is that part of the ka Kahuna? Well, being a Kahuna is being like a spiritual guide or be, being that priest or that shaman. I do ancestral clearing is because that is something that I've worked on on myself clearing. This is something that I'm an expert in because I've done it on myself and clearing a lot of like my old family beliefs and karmic patterns and separating myself from that and limiting beliefs. So that's kind of where I put that two together. So using my gifts as, you know, part of the- isn't it, isn't it amazing how we pick up the energy from our ancestors and not even just our mother and our father, but our grandmothers Wait. and our great grandfathers and just like anything that, that comes into us. And, you know, so many people are stuck and they don't realize that what they're dealing with is not their own. But no. So somewhere else. Exactly. Like at that time, like I didn't know, like, I, as I said, part of my mind was like, you're crazy. You're weird. <laughs> Stay away from her. Run away as far as you can from this lady because she's weird. She's crazy. But then now doing the work, now realizing what that was, that was my family's beliefs stopping me from that. It was, uh, it was because of their own fear, you know? So their love and protection, trying to protect me, kept me from, you know, having that. And then as I was doing my work, what I, where it came from, what you're talking about, like it can come down from generations all the way past. What well, this came from in 2000 and no, this came from in 1905 where Hawaii became the U.S. territory of the United States. We became the United States. And when that happened, they blocked, they suppressed our music, our dance, our culture, even our spiritual practices. We were not allowed to practice that. So Are you serious? This, I'm serious, yeah. So because of this heavy suppression, now this created a karmic pattern culturally in, our, in my culture. Wow. So this is where I've been, you know, you see, so this is not just me, it's just bigger than me. I had no idea that that's what happened to your people. Not a lot of people do. Yeah, in 1905, you know, that's we, what happened. We, we know that they did it with the indigenous people of America. Yeah. You know, exactly. the same thing was done to them. Yeah. But, you know, and I'm a history buff. So it's just like, I didn't know this, but, you know, it's funny because the first time I went to Kauai was after my first husband died. Mm -hmm. And I was going to take my kids, I, three at the time, they were 12, 7, and 5. This is back in 2004. So I was going to take them. It had been a, a two hard years because their dad had been disabled. So I was, we, we had gotten death benefits and he got disability payback. So I was going to take them to Florida. And I hear in this head, Hawaii. I never had a desire to go to Hawaii because I'm a big history buff. I'd rather go someplace like walk the Oregon Trail. Okay. You know, go, especially, I'm especially into the Western history. So I'm arguing with this voice in my head about going there. Finally, I'm like, okay, fine, I'll go. Just tell me which island to go to. And that's when I was led to go to Kauai. But it's just, you know, it's funny how things like that happen with us or, you know, and it's out of the blue because I didn't have things like, like what you did when you were growing up. I didn't have that. But 
my point was is that I really didn't do a lot of studying on the islands of Hawaii because they were never a big interest to me. So it just, you know, it saddens me that your people had to be suppressed by our freaking government, you know. I love my country. I do not like the government. I totally disagree with them. And especially with all this garbage going on right now, they're they're terrorists. Yeah. That's, you know, why terror, that's why it's important terror. to reclaim that power back. Right. It's, it's to continue to do the work and stand in our power and reclaim that back for ourselves. And that's what I feel like what I'm doing. And that's the gift that I'm giving back to everyone. It's that's to awesome. be able, yeah, it's to be able to yeah, give back and reclaim that. So are you gonna open up some center, some sort of center facility and like reincorporate all this stuff into it? Um, no, I actually do one-on-one -on -one programs. So you can work with me on a one-on-one -on -one basis. It's a six month program and it's breaking your ancestral karmic limitations. And it's 12, it's 24 sessions, but 12 sessions is live like this. So I can help you guys know whatever challenges and what's going on and help you coach you what's going on in your life. And then the other ones is like, you know, workbooks and classes and that you download and all that. And I have an ancestral cleanup method that I specifically teach to help you um, break free from these patterns and these ancestral patterns, these karmic patterns, these karmic ties that you may have. And instead of what that is, is instead of analyzing your beliefs, like what traditionally what you normally would do, what I do is I help you connect to your own female creative energy by using your emotions in a sacred safe space so that you can dive really deep in and pull out the answers for yourself by connecting to your inner trust and your inner knowing your inner wisdom so that you can get the answers that you're seeking from within so a lot of people don't even realize that this is their problem. No. Yeah. You know, I think it might be my issue. I've, you know, gone through anything traumatic that has been in my life and I've made peace with it. And I said, okay, it's in the past. I can't do anything about it. And it's not like I, I focus on it or let it bring me down. Oh, this person did this to me, this person, you know, mm -hmm. I cleanse all that but I'm still not making the strides that I would like to make. And I know that I went to an energy worker because I thought maybe, what was it I was thinking? Oh, that I had some kind of energetic block somewhere. So, and at that time, I didn't know about the ancestral stuff. I've learned about that within like the past year or so. Mm. So she said, no, you don't have any blocks. You're fine. You're okay. And I was like, she said, you do have some holes in your karma, though, you know, so we're going to plug those up with some rose cords. But as far as like, I guess maybe she doesn't do that kind of work or because I didn't know about it, I didn't ask her. Mm -hmm. You know, that wasn't what I inquired for her to do. Mm -hmm. So, but it's just, I mean, how many of us are out there? We don't even know if that's what's wrong with us. Yeah, so a lot of people, like when I, my clients come to me, they don't come to me because they want to do ancestral work. That's not what they specifically come here. Come here. That's what they get once they work with me, but that's not what they come for. <laughs> and I love, so right. what do they come for? So a lot of times what I found in doing my work, they come for the main four key areas. They want to have a relationship, they want money or an abundance, they want a career, or they are something dealing with their health issue, okay? So, like, for an example, I've had a client, she wanted to find a relationship. She was divorced for five years, she had a kid, she's tried dating, she's tried dating sites, and it just wasn't working for her. So, once we started working together, what we found was a lot of her choosing and the her patterns were patterning, were mirroring her parents' relationship and how her parents were to relate with each other. That in the relationship with her mother, 
her mother felt unseen, unheard, not being worthy. So she, on some level, picked that up and then having a hard time creating a relationship that she was being seen, that she was being valued and she was being appreciated. You know, so we had to clean some of that stuff up. A lot of times it's like I had another client who, who um, wanted uh, money because she is a single mom. She had two kids. She wanted to have her own home. She was living with her parent, her family at the time. She was struggling. And she all she wanted is to have her own home for herself. So after working with me, um, realizing, starting peeling the layers of like, you know, her money situation, the root to that was when she was a child. And this is a memory she forgot, that she forgot that she, um, her parents lost their family home through financial hardship. So because her family lost their home and finance, she still carried that shame, still carried that burden on her. Even though it happened to her parents that she was little, she still carried that. And that prevented her from having a home. Seven months later, we're done with the process. Seven months later, I get a text and she's like, guess what? She is in the home that she wanted and she created with her kids now living in this home. Nice. So it's like people don't come to me because they want to clear their answers. They're coming to me for, you know, they have these blockages. They're feeling like they're just feeling stuck. They're just feeling like they can't move, move forward no matter which way they, they, you know, go to. And then, you know, I, we just work through the layers and keep working the layers and getting down to that root, root cause. And just like, you know, I had a, another woman, like in her career, she came, she was upset. She was mad. She just, she, she told me, she goes, I get mad every time, every time I start a new job, eventually I fight with, with the, a lady at my job. I was like, oh, it's always a lady okay, not a guy, always late that created every time she would either lose her job or she were, were forced to quit every single job she had. So this pattern kept showing up. And then, so as we were working together, it came down to is that I go, you have un un unresolved issues with your mother. And she cries. She broke down. And she goes, oh, my God, my mom died 10 years ago. And I still hold anger and resent towards her. And it was showing up in her job. So wow. if you're if, so these things are not dealt, mm -hmm. it will show up in these areas of your life if they are not right. addressed. Well, and the, the one woman you were talking about who was carrying the energy from when her parents lost the house. Do you know how old she was when they lost the house? Five, six. See, and that's the thing too, is that because we're all energy, we're all interconnected. And you know, our parents, I mean, we if, if you are carrying a baby and you're stressed, that baby's got getting the energy and it's not healthy. You know, this is like I tell people all the time, you know, there's so much about ourselves that we aren't told. You know, we're, we're not told about how energy affects us, how we are energy, how everything's energy, how we're interconnected, how my energy can affect your energy and vice versa. Absolutely. You know, and all this, and of course, at five years old, <clears throat> the brain is in that theta state. So between one and seven, it's in that state. And that's the state where we can be programmed. That's where we get our programming from. But of course, now as adults, we're in that theta brain, brain state when we're going to sleep and when we're waking up. So we can, we can repro reprogram ourselves. But we can't do that if we don't know what the issue is, do we? No, we don't. So that's why like a lot of, they think they're coming to me because of one thing. But after, as we're working together, we get to the real part to it of it so that it can completely be reprogrammed. You can get re reprogrammed, but until you get to the actual root to the cause of it, it will still recycle itself. Just like, the, just like my client, the one that was arguing with the ladies at her job, you know, she's a Reiki master. She does energy work as well. Really? Yes. And she still had these underlying issues. And her mom's passed 10 years. 
you know? So it's like, she was still carrying on this energy, but then it was playing out in other areas of your life. Right. So, yeah. So even though she was an energy worker and she knew about energy, she still had that. So when she came to you, did she realize that it was some kind of energy or what was, how did she approach you about this? What did she say, you know, I've, I've, every time I get a job, I end up losing it. So it was specifically for her career, correct? Yep. Specifically for her career. She, we were just talking, actually. She wasn't even my client yet. We were just talking and she was just explaining her life and what was happening. And then I was just like, hmm. I, you know, I just pointed it out. You have, all I said to her was, you have unresolved issues with your mother. And then she's like, then at that point, she got it. Then she started, then she started working with me. And in the session, it came up with a memory she had as a child, how her mother was and where she got out of this anger and resentment. So helping her charge that she went back to work the next day and she everything started shifting and changing for her the next day after that nice. because she got because she got down to it wasn't just, I didn't just leave it to oh you have unresolved issues with your mom and just left it at the right that's just mm -hmm. one layer but then when we started working the energy around the her, her relationship between her and her mother then it got to another le level and another level. And then finally it was able to come up. You know, it's like a, that seed, that seed was able to come up, that root. So how is she doing right now? She's doing amazing. She got a job at Nike, so. <laughs> nice. You got her a job at Nike, huh? She did. <laughs> no, but if it wasn't for you helping her peel back those layers. <laughs> True. You know, just like you helped that woman to get a house. If you didn't help her peel, peel back oh, those absolutely. layers. Yeah, she would have remained stuck in that energy and lived with mommy and daddy forever. Oof. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, she wanted to create something, but something was holding her back. So then there you go. You know what I mean? But this doesn't like just in those. Those are just the main areas, but it it also strings to other places in your life too. You know. So that's what I love about this work. Is like, yeah, people don't come to me just because I want. I need dance to show up. No. <laughs> there's there's more you know so if you're feeling like stuck or you're just feeling like no matter which way that you try you know you've gone to therapy you've gone to other energy workers and it seems to keep coming up for you then majority of the time then it's that ancestral thing you know right but it can also be other energy from other people in your life say if you were traumatized by your spouse or by somebody that was close to you mm -hmm. right yeah a lot of times they are just the um what would you how would you i would call it so those people are just servicers to you to help you heal that they have to they light that up they activate that in you so that you can do something about it you can heal that you can change that right so I there's a lot of times that I have people too who come from a, an abusive relationship mm -hmm. but then there's somewhere down the family line doesn't have to be the mom and dad directly but where we're talking how it can go past our parents yeah there yeah. you go or it could have been a okay. past life from another life that she is still playing out in that karmic life into this lifetime. So okay, that people, makes sense. Yeah, so there's these people are just servicers just to help you to clear that too so you can become aware of that so you can start to shift that and change that for yourself. You know? Okay. Not to change the subject, but I've, I'm, I'm interested. I'd like to know more about the kahuna Mm -hmm. if, if you can talk about that and give exact, exactly what what is that so as i mentioned before kahuna in my culture the definition of that is a priestess a shaman uh or a spiritual guide yeah someone who can facilitate 
between the spiritual world and the material world. Just like how when I was younger, I was able to speak with my grandmother. So I'm able to like tap in into your ancestors, like your past ancestors and have conversations with them. And then bringing that information because everything is not just karmic negative stuff that your ancestors have for you. There's positive stuff too. So I'm able to have those conversations with them and then bring that into present moment into this lifetime so that it's harmonious to you in this in this lifetime and you're not affected by and with that pressure of the the past so is there a process to, in order to consider yourself the this type of worker do you have to go through some kind of process do you have to work with um elders oh like if i oh no i didn't work with any of that um for me it's because it's a like for me i just have to reclaim my birthright from where it was suppressed because as I said, it came from my mom, from my grandfather, from my great grandmother. So for me personally, this is something that is my birthright that it comes through my lineage. This is just something that who I am gotcha. and reclaiming that birthright. For others, like I've even gone, went through my spiritual training and I, I'm an ordained minister through that. You know what I mean? And so you can, there's, all, there's a ton of people who do shaman work. And I, I personally didn't go through the shaman work kind of in that sort of, but not really. But I, uh, for me, I just have to um, just claim and make a decision. This is my birthright. This is who I am. Right. Yeah. So where does your family originate from? The Big I know Island. With who, huh? The Big Island. Well, I know, but I know like people came from the Philippines and from like Japan and they settled on the islands. So do you know where your ancestors originally came from? What I know of, my father is an immigrant from the Philippines. Okay. So he came over in 1925 to work on the sugarcane plantation, sugarcane fields. So I definitely know that's where he originated from. My mother, she, all I know is that her family is born and raised here. Our lineage and our genealogy goes back to Kamehameha the Great. So our bloodline is from the Big Island. And that's kind of where our, our bloodline and our genealogy stem. My mom's a genealogist of the family. So she, that's kind of where it started. As far as like Hawaii was made of, um, from a bunch of cultures like Polynesia, and we all came to here, we migrated that part. I don't have any information on that. Good. Not on paper. Well, not on paper, but if maybe if I just tune in, then yeah. It would be interesting to know. But, um, the reason I'm asking is because I know like certain people, certain cultures have very strong beliefs in dealing with the supernatural and recognizing the fact of how powerful we actually are. And uh-huh. they embrace that. Uh-huh. So I was just wondering, you know, if that was like part of maybe your dad's culture when he was in the Philippines or no? No, my father did not believe in any of this. As I said, like I was girl, I was raised, none of my family believed in the spiritual work or any of that. They were in fear of that. Locked it to, there is stories of my grandfather, my mother's father, my grandfather actually practicing in the work. There was times where uh, my aunt, she told me this story of, she was massaging him one night and the front door opened hmm. and then he spoke fluent Hawaiian. So he spoke fluent Hawaiian and then all of a sudden the door closed. I hope they locked the door, but the door closed completely back. So when she asked, what was that about? He said, oh, nothing. We don't talk about that. I don't want that kind of stuff around here. So he knew, he knew about it, but he just didn't want to talk about it. Well, that's kind of sad, huh? It's a bit, but it's all it's all good at the same time. He did he had his reason, you know what I mean? He had his right. reasons to do it. And so by me stepping into this power and stepping reclaiming my birthright, I had a lot of family members, especially my own mother, who was not okay with that, who is still at this today not okay with me being who I am and embracing my even though it comes from my lineage she's still not okay with that 
And you told her that? Yeah. That we she, we have many, does, we does have she many believe you? Does she believe you that it's part of your lineage? She does. She does, but it's hard for her to accept that because she comes from a very strong religious background, belief. What religion? Mormon. Mormon? Mm -hmm. Wow. Are there a lot of people from your culture? Are they Mormons? A lot, yes. And my family runs deep in the Mormon church. So one day I had this conversation with my mother. She asked me, she goes, oh, there's a lady like you at my church. I go, what do you mean, mom, a lady like me? She goes, oh, she, you know, she's sensitive like you. She said she, she can, you know, facilitate and talk to spirits, whatever. And I was like, okay, so she goes, and she still comes to church. I go, well, good for her. And then she goes, oh, and then I told her, I go, mom, can I ask you a question? And she goes, yes. And I go, how come there is no priestesshood, but there's only priesthood in the Mormon church? Her answer to me was, oh, it says it in the book. And I was like, okay, well, here's my deal. This is my belief, mom. This is my lineage. This is our lineage from your, your father, our lineage. So um, I'm going to stick with that because that's my blood, right? That's me. That's my blood. I'm not going to have anyone else tell me if I can and cannot be this way. And so after that, she's never, she, she don't bring it up anymore. So what about, what about your son? How old is your son now? My son's 24. Well, you don't look old enough to have a 24 year old. I do. <laughs> so does, is, has he shown any signs yes. of? Yes. At 16 years old, we got into the biggest fight ever as a 16 year old. And to the point when we were done arguing, he came to me, he goes, mom, I need help. At the time I was taking, I was already in four years of my training, a meditation training. And he came to me, he goes, mom, I need help. I go, what do you mean? He goes, I just need help. He kept pointing to his head. And I was like, okay, how can I help you? And he goes, I want to take meditation classes. So I took him to the same school that I went to. It was 12 weeks. He became a different man. Like he, he, at, before meditation, before energy work, before him doing all that, he was just a typical teenage boy, talk back. Didn't want to do school, didn't want, like, barely did anything, didn't want to come out of his room, played a lot of video games. It took a lot for me to get him to do his house chores. After the 12 weeks, he was a different boy. That culturally here in Hawaii, he's also a different person. Like, he bought his own, he's now an electrician, 24. He's an electrician, one of the head guys in his company, and he bought himself a, his own home. And nice. at 24 years old. You know, because he didn't have, he worked on that part, you know, so he wanted to, and he's very open to it. So did you talk to him about his lineage? Yes. How old was he when you first talked to him? When he started going to the center, when he started doing the energy work. So at 16. Mm hmm and even now he is like I told him ago I cleared the energy lineage for my side of the family you need to do that for your father's side of the family so he's working on that wait oh okay all right I got what you said you cleared it for your side he's going to clear it for his dad's side is his dad active in his life mm, yes and no it's only if he wants to. They the right now, right now it's it's up to my son if he decides he wants to. It's not gotcha. that his father wants to. It's just he has some things that he's he's working on. That's his journey. That's what he needs to work on. I'm just here to help him and support him on that journey. He's got ancestral baggage too, huh? Yeah, he does. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we all do. Yeah. So yeah. he's working. So he's work, he's working on his his dad's side of the of it, and he's you know he if he gets to it he gets to it he doesn't he doesn't you know is is what I told him but that's his decision and his choice. Right. Well, it's been great talking to you, Janice. Is there anything you want to leave the listening audience with? Let them know where they can find you. 
Yeah, of course. Uh, you can find me on Instagram. It's Janice underscore Ulani. And um, we're on Facebook. Again, Janice Ululani. Janice Rekalon, actually. Ululani is my middle name. So, um, Could you spell that, please? Yes. It's J-A-N-E-S-E underscore U-L-U. U L U L A N I Ulani. Yeah. And then I also do offer like um I do have six month um program where we work the ancestral karmic limitations to help you break free and break through those. So I have uh six month coaching sessions on that. I also have a three month coaching sessions as well. And and I also do personal sessions one on one. And those are healing and energy work. And you can all find that in book on um, on my booking page, which is HTTPS colon underscore underscore um, Janice Ulani dot set more dot com. And I can leave that in the comments here. So you can post that somewhere and you can book a session with me. Great. Do you have any last thoughts you want to leave our audience with? Hmm, do you have any last thoughts of it? No, other than, you know, just, yeah, just kind of, just be, be in a place of living with ease in your life. Mm -hmm. what, however that may look for you, you know, if it's going out and doing a walk for 10 minutes or just sitting in the sun, whatever that is, I just want you all to go and find some ease. Nice. Janice, thank you so much for being on. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you too, Joy. Thank you for having me. Thank you everyone for listening. Hope you enjoy. Thank you everyone for listening and enjoy the rest of your day, morning, night, wherever you are. Remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell. I put podcasts up every Thursday you don't, so you don't want to miss the notice notification. And meanwhile, just keep on shining your light. Till yep. next time. Awesome. Yep.